Hello everyone, it's July 2nd, 2014. This article taken from the economiccollapseblog.com. This is what is going to happen if Ebola comes to America. If the worst Ebola outbreak in recorded history reaches the United States, federal law permits, quote, the apprehension and examination of any individual reasonably believed to be infected with a communicable disease, end quote. These individuals can be detained for such time and in such manner as may be reasonably necessary. In other words, the federal government already has the authority to round up people against their will, take them to detention facilities, and hold them there for as long as they feel it is reasonably necessary. In addition, as you will read about below, the federal government has the authority to separate and restrict the movement of well persons who may have been exposed to a communicable disease to see if they become ill. If you want to look at these laws in the broader sense, they pretty much give the federal government the power to do almost anything that they want with us in the event of a major pandemic. Of course, such a scenario probably would not be called martial law, but it would probably feel a lot like it. If Ebola comes to America and starts spreading, one of the first things that would happen would be for the CDC to issue a federal isolation or quarantine order. The following is what the CDC website says about what could happen under such an order. Isolation is used to separate ill persons who have a communicable disease from those who are healthy. Isolation restricts the movement of ill persons to help stop the spread of certain diseases. For example, hospitals use isolation for patients with infectious tuberculosis. Quarantine is used to separate and restrict the movement of well persons who may have been exposed to a communicable disease to see if they become ill. These people may have been exposed to a disease and do not know it, or they may have had the disease but do not show symptoms. Quarantine can also help limit the spread of communicable disease. Isolation and quarantine are used to protect the public by preventing exposure to infected persons or to persons who may be infected. In addition to serving as medical functions, isolation and quarantine are also police power functions derived from the right of the state to take action affecting individuals for the benefit of the, of the society. Isolation would not be a voluntary thing. The federal government would start hunting down anyone that they reasonably believe to be infected with a communicable disease and taking them to the facilities where other patients were being held. It wouldn't matter if you were entirely convinced that you were 100% healthy. If the government wanted to take you in, you would have no rights in that situation. In fact, federal law would allow the government to detain you for such a time and in such a manner as may be reasonably necessary. And once you get locked up with all of the other Ebola patients, there would be a pretty good chance that you would end up getting the disease and dying anyway. The current Ebola outbreak has a 55% mortality rate, and experts tell us that the mortality rate for Ebola can be as high as 90%. Once you contracted Ebola, this is what it would look like. Sudden onset of fever, intense weakness, muscle pain, headache, and sore throat. That is followed by vomiting, diarrhea, rash, impaired kidney, and liver function, and eternal and ex internal and external bleeding. The external bleeding may include bleeding from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, and just about every other major body cavity. So how is Ebola spread? Well, medical authorities tell us that it can be spread through the blood, urine, saliva, stools, and semen of a person or animal that already has Ebola. If you are exposed to the disease, the incubation period can be from anywhere from 2 days up to 21 days but the average is usually about 8 to 10 days. In other words, you can be spreading it around for over a week before you even know you have it. There is no vaccine for Ebola, and there is no cure. Not everyone dies from the virus, but most people do. Needless to say, this is about the last disease that you want to catch, and the doctors that are treating Ebola patients in Africa are going to extreme lengths to keep from getting it. But despite all those extraordinary measures, multiple doctors have already gotten sick. And two American doctors that went over to Africa to help fight the disease are now battling for their own lives. This is not like other Ebola outbreaks. Something seems different this time. But instead of trying to keep things isolated to a few areas, global health authorities are going to start sending Ebola patients to other parts of the globe. 
For example, one German hospital has already agreed to start receiving Ebola patients. Will Ebola patients also soon be sent to hospitals in the United States? And of course, there are many other ways that Ebola could spread to this country. For instance, all it would take would be for one infected person to get on one airplane and it could all be over. Federal authorities seem to have been preparing for such an outbreak for a while. As my good friend Mark Slavo has pointed out, biological diagnostic systems were distributed to National Guard units in all 50 states back in April. Let us certainly hope for the best. Let us hope that this latest outbreak fizzles and that we won't even be talking about this by the end of the year. But experts are warning that if a major global pandemic does break out, that millions upon millions of people could die. If that happens, many people will go crazy with fear. And we got just a little taste of some of the paranoia that Ebola epidemic in America would create in Charlotte, North Carolina earlier this week. It is not too hard to imagine forced quarantines and people being rounded up and shipped off to Ebola detention facilities. In fact, if Ebola were to start spreading like wildfire in this country, many people would actually start demanding such measures. For example, one member of Congress is already promising that citizens of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, and any foreigner that has recently visited those nations be kept out of the United States. In a letter addressed to Secretary of State John Kerry and Department of Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, Alan Grayson, a Florida Democrat, proposed that citizens of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, as well as any foreign person who has visited one of those nations, 90 days prior to arriving in the United States be kept out of the country. He urged the secretaries to consider the enhanced risk, risk of Ebola now present presents to the American public. So what do you think of about all of this? What do you believe will happen if Ebola comes to America? And that's the end of the article. Wow, this is quite scary. And I do wonder why they're letting this dreadful, dreadful disease come into this country. Please circulate this information. I hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.